Could you not just eat vegan three times a day when you eat and then focus all of your other energy on these interpersonal relationships that you clearly care about and are of course very important? I could, but and I know this will sound cool to you, but ultimately I don't want to and I feel that there is no obligation. Whilst I understand that you don't want to, wants are not good justifications when it comes to the exploitation of others. The want in and of itself shouldn't make it morally permissible. Hi Jed, my name is Ed and uh, nice little rhyme and it's lovely to meet you. Uh, thank you so much for sitting down and uh, having a conversation with me. As Thanks. you know, uh, yeah, you're welcome. As you know, I have a banner and it says, why aren't you vegan yet? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, what are your thoughts about that question? So as a libertarian, I believe that um, people should have the freedom to do with their uh, life, body and lifestyle as they wish. And I believe that um, I very much respect the fact that you're vegan and I hope that there are businesses which uh, cater to you and that if there aren't everywhere, uh, given how big um, the vegan culture is now, they're really missing out and they should hop in on it. Yeah. But I also believe that we should, um, those of us who do not uh, care to be uh, vegan, yeah. I think those of us who do like meat, since after all we are made with both kinds of teeth as humans, we do have both uh, the carnivorous and the herbivorous teeth, yeah. I believe that um, there should be no cultural pressure for us to be vegan. Yeah. I believe that if we enjoy eating meat from ultimately different species, lower species, if they weren't lower species, then why haven't they destroyed us yet? Um, okay, let's stop that so for yes. a second. The first thing, just very brief, briefly to do with the teeth, uh, many herbivorous animals also have canine teeth. I'm not saying we're herbivores, biologically speaking, but just because we have canines doesn't provide us with a moral justification to, to harm animals. You know, we can do a multitude of things, but just because we have the capacity to do those things doesn't provide us with the justification to do so. Uh, the first point you made about being a libertarian was about kind of like, you know, individual sovereignty um, and the right to your own kind of like life and existence. Um, but what about the animals? Why, do, why does our right to our own sovereignty and our own individuality and our own body, uh, how is it morally justified to come at the expense of someone else? So um, as a libertarian, ultimately, I believe that uh, our government, I like the libertarian form of government, and ultimately it is the government. Uh, government is a contract between individuals and a sovereign state so that uh, we do not all murder each other and we live in some sort of order. Yeah. And um, animals are not included in this. They Not, not currently, of course. Well, um, they would not be able to participate in, um, they, they would not be able to actively participate in any formation of a government. Sure. Um, but, but of course, um, when we're talking about social contracts, humans with a lack of certain cognitive abilities, they also can't engage in the social contracts that we're discussing. Are their lives less morally valuable because they can't engage in the same social contracts that you and I can? Well, ultimately, they will eventually be able to, but also... Not someone, not someone who's uh, cognitively impaired in the ways that we're discussing right now. Perhaps not, but they are also human. And ultimately, different species have different social contracts. Well, for example, how about um, if we're going to talk about animals in general, what about the wolves? Should we chastise them? Should we reprimand them for uh, feeding on um, species which are lower down the food chain? Animals in the wild who, who kill other animals do so out of necessity, they do so to survive. Uh, we don't have that excuse. And also, uh, we have moral agency. You know, on the one hand, we're referring to ourselves as higher beings, you know, they're lower beings. But on the other hand, we're trying to use what they do to justify our morality. It can't be both things. So animals in the wild don't have the moral agency that we do. We, because we have moral agency, we're able to rationalize our choices and we're able to understand the positives and negatives of those choices. And because we live in a society where we have the choice to do something else that's something else reducing suffering then morally speaking to me that's the preferable choice to make what do you think about that uh, I guess first I would ask you what is human morality what is human moral agency uh, well morality in its in its purest philosophical terms is of course subjective I don't I don't have a spiritual or religious belief that creates a definition of what is moral or immoral but I think that we can by and large try and understand morality as being something that is seeking to reduce harm and suffering. Something that's working to create a society that is more quote-unquote utopian, even though that word is, of course, uh, you know, impractical because it will never exist. It's about pursuing um, goals and aspirations that make life better for as many people and as many beings as possible. So reducing suffering, basically. So altruism. Altruism.
Um, exactly. I mean, I guess you could go down the route of altruism, yes. So, um, one question that I would ask is, if it came down to reducing the suffering or the hunger of human beings and the, um, I guess, the death of animals, uh, which would you choose? Would I choose an animal over a human if the human is starving? Is that the question you're asking? Yes. Uh, if, it, if in times of necessity you can morally justify something, so if a human is starving and requires, um, you know, needs to kill a chicken to survive, then of course the human could justify that. But that's not the situation we're in. You know, in a situ an extreme situation, you could find reasons to save one life over the other. Case in point, let's say a building is on fire and inside the building you have a five-year-old child and a 95-year-old human. You could justify saving the five-year-old child over the 95-year-old human because the child has their life ahead of them, you know, all these different, different factors, but that doesn't justify needlessly harming the elderly in a normal society. Same with the animals. We don't have the choice between a chicken and a human. If we did, you could definitely choose the human over the chicken, but our choice is human, chicken, or neither. And because we have the neither choice, that is the morally preferable choice to make. But uh, one thing that I want to return to is you mentioned that um, there shouldn't be a hierarchy of beings. I, but, I didn't say that. Or, okay, so you do say that um, in a time between choosing a chicken and a human, you would choose the human. In a, in a situation of necessity, where I had no choice but to choose one or the other, you could find justifications for why the human life would be wor worth saving over the chicken's life. This doesn't disprove veganism, because veganism is the stance that in a situation where we have the option to not harm either life, that is the morally obligated uh, decision to make. What do you think? When we have the choice between human, chicken or neither, what is the morally obligated choice to make? I believe and respect that um, I believe that anyone uh, should have the capacity to choose uh, what they believe their obligation is so long as they do not actively infringe on the rights of another human being in our society. Can I, let's take, let's, let's remove farm animals, let's go for any animal. Could I kick a dog, stomp a dog to death? Could I poach an elephant? Could I hunt a whale? Can I do anything to any other animal based on the fact that I am a human and as a libertarian yourself, that's the only thing that has a sovereign value when it comes to species? Has our society outlawed, outlawed these things? Are we living in a society that has outlawed... Um, Does poaching? legality equal morality? <laughs> in my view, I do not believe that there is an intrinsic morality. So just because something is legal doesn't mean that it's wrong or right? I believe that ultimately a government comes together and they inform society of their laws, which are essentially the moral values and the moral codes to abide by so as to but make the change, right? society... Law, laws change as do morals within society. Exactly, because it is a top-down movement. Yeah. So we challenge things regardless of the legality of those things. So just because you know killing a pig is legal, but uh, hunting, you know, poaching an elephant is illegal, doesn't mean that killing a pig is moral and poaching an elephant is immoral. Because morality and legality, whilst they should be the same, of course we would think that they should be, in actuality they're not. Well, I would say that different people can have different opinions of it and ultimately what matters in um, the only thing that objectively matters is what the law is. So what's say. your opinion then? Let's say a dog's walking past now, can I stomp that dog to death if I want to? Uh, is it outlawed here? What is the law here? It's not. Let's, say, let's say it's not outlawed. Let's say for a hypothetical situation, currently where we are, it's not outlawed for me to stomp that dog to death. What is your personal opinion on the morality of me doing so? I do not operate with um, the idea of a morality so you c I personally wouldn't I don't feel the need to but if you did um, you okay outside of a legal system anyone should be allowed to do whatever they want as long as they personally think that that's fine and you wouldn't stop that that's why we created legal systems because we were going around and we we would just go around and kill each other for a meal what about in, in cultures where, let's say, homosexuality is illegal? Is homosexuality immoral in those cultures because it's illegal? Well, that's also why I don't believe in moral systems personally. I believe that they are societal constructs. So, so is homosexuality immoral in societies where the construct is that it's illegal? In that society, they have constructed themselves in that way that, yes. What, what do you think? I support homosexuality fully. So, you support homosexuality, but in a culture where it's illegal, you think it's acceptable, do you... I'm not, don't want to put words in your mouth, but do, so, so those should, they should be challenged then? I support challenging them, yes. Right, so, okay, so outside of cultures and outside of laws, we now accept that just because something is cultural or something is legal or illegal doesn't mean that it is moral or immoral, and we should challenge things regardless of their cultural or legal status. 
you have the um, right and capacity to challenge them uh, peacefully. Okay, peacefully. Okay, okay. Great. So we, we accept that now. The important thing that we need to establish is that culture doesn't define morality or, more importantly, something isn't moral simply because it's cultural and secondly, something isn't moral simply because it's legal slash illegal. Okay, great. So when it comes to animals then for you, in your personal opinion, is there any moral consideration that a non-human animal deserves? Do they deserve anything, any consideration at all? They do not deserve anything, no. We can give them, but anything that we give them is grace. It is not something that they intrinsically deserve. Why do humans intrinsically deserve uh, moral consideration? Because we are creating the society amongst ourselves. Okay, but what is it about being human that means that we deserve more? Because that, that's not deserving, that's not intrinsic. You're saying that value to a human is created based on the society that we, we've created. But what about in you know, environments where they haven't created the societies that we have? You know, is there something intrinsic about a human that means that we deserve value or should be viewed with value? I think that um, we as humans uh, can accept, be more accepting, but in technicality, for example, within the United States, I believe that somebody who does not have a direct affiliation with the United States, be they, uh, like you said, a work visa, or be they a permanent resident, or be they a citizen, technically they do not have any rights in the United States. Um, you could argue something with like the United Nations, but they technically do not have any rights in the United States. But I think that we would be more favorable to them than an animal because we do Ultimately, humans have a potential to interact with human societies in a way that a wolf does not. The way that we, as wolves, wolves would not give us the rights. Um, yeah, but, but that doesn't matter. That's irrelevant about what wolves would or wouldn't do. It's about what we do with the intelligence that we have. And again, I, I bring it back to the question I asked earlier. What about a human who has a cognitive impairment that means that they can't engage in society in the way that we're talking? That they can't engage in the things that we're discussing that you say assign humans worth? Do those people not deserve moral consideration as well because they can't engage in the way that we're talking about um i mean they are definitely affiliated with our i would say that they are affiliated with our society what do you um, mean by affiliated um for example uh do they have a affiliate if they are if they have like residency or if they have like just a legal affiliation with the united states then they are um subject to all of the laws and protections afforded by the united states so a human being's moral worth is based on the legal protections assigned to them as citizens of the United States. So before citizenship, um, the objective worth. Now, personal. Um, now, personally, we can have differences, and we did uh, discuss the whole um, uh, the uh, argument of like a society which is homophobic. Yes. Um, but um, and I certainly respect your opinion you. that uh, that you can be uh, that like veganism is moral and I definitely I am not going to challenge it I'm not going to say that you are wrong okay. I am just saying that we can coexist oh we can coexist we do the problem isn't you and I because I'm not the victim and neither are you in this conversation the problem is the animal they can't coexist in this in this scenario so we're not we're not talking as a victim and an oppressor we're talking as two oppressors or a potential oppressor and a current oppressor and we're talking about a victim and, and what I'm saying is that what about their rights? What about their standing? Now, you're saying that they don't have those under the law. Okay, fair enough. But that's just because of the legal system that we have. Legality changes, as does morality. But I think when it comes to humans, what means that we have moral worth isn't uh, the laws or the, that are granted to US citizens. It's to do with, with basic things such as sentience, you know, consciousness, the capacity to experience. You know, when, when I stab, you know, if I was to stab someone, it wouldn't be wrong for me to stab that person because they're a US citizen and they're protected by the law. It would be wrong for me to stab that person because stabbing them causes them harm and it's unnecessary for me to do so. The same is true of the animals. Stabbing them to death and cutting their throats is wrong because it's unnecessary for me to do it and for you to do it. And it is a non-consensual thing that harms them for a needless reason. They too have sentience and consciousness and the capacity to experience. They may not be protected by the law, but they still feel and still suffer and still have the capacities that that in my eyes surely must create moral worth for them as individuals. I do believe that they have the capacity to feel and I do also believe that we actually underestimate their intelligence yeah. and we are, but I will also say that, and this is the biologist starting to come in, um, the cerebral uh, cortex, ultimately we have a greater ability um, to think uh, conceptually, to think abstractly, um, which is why we're even having this discussion right now. That's great. Um, 
than any other species. Which but does is, that justify arbitrarily harming them? You know, because we're saying might makes right. Because we have these cognitive advancements, because we're intellectually superior, we therefore have the right to dominate. Do you, do you think that's true? Does, does intelligence and power create the, um, the moral justification to tyrannize? Well, ultimately, that is the question of human history, isn't it? But, it is. And, unfor and unfortunately, and human a, history is fraught with examples of why that shouldn't be the case. And it's still an ongoing conversation in, amongst humans. So one question that I would have, actually, is perhaps, um, is veganism, um, is this the pressing issue when we still have so many um, cases of human rights? Is this the conversation that we should be having? Should we not perhaps wait until we have our house in order? Well, I don't think we'll ever have our house in order, unfortunately. But the point is, uh, social justice issues aren't mutually exclusive. You can be in favour of multiple social justice issues and campaign on behalf of multiple social justice issues as well. It's not an either-or scenario. The thing about veganism is what we consume is, a, is, is passive. And what I mean by that is we have to eat. You know, we don't have, we, that, that's non-negotiable. Yeah. So to be vegan just means the three times a day where we eat meals, if we eat something else, right, now we can go and campaign on behalf of all these other issues that need campaign on behalf of. But if we just make that small change, we can not only reduce animal suffering significantly, but also human suffering. There are a huge intersections between um, you know, human exploitation and indeed the agricultural industry as well. So we need to attack all of these things, but we shouldn't just discount something because there is something else. You know, we could, we could discount feminism because there's still issues of uh, you know, human exploitation in the Southeast or something of, of Asia. So there are all these different problems that exist, but we shouldn't discount one problem because another problem also exists at the same time. We, we should work to, to solve all of them. When it comes to the options that we have available in front of us, do you think that reducing the suffering of animals should be the morally preferable choice, considering that you acknowledge that they feel, and you also, and I agree with you on this, you think that, they, that we as a species um, discount their intelligence, and maybe do you think that because we do that, and because they also have the capacity to experience like you've acknowledged, that they should be given the moral consideration to not be needlessly exploited and killed, considering it harms them in a non consensual way all the same i still do believe that the uh societally agreed pleasure of a human comes before uh the pleasure of an animal it's not about the pleasure of the animal it's about their their entire existence it's about their life it's about everything that they have everything that's precious and valuable to them we're saying that our pleasure is more important than their very being and not only our pleasure but 15 minutes of pleasure we eat a meal it's 15 minutes we're talking about that 15 minutes of pleasure and beyond that we can eat you know delicious plant-based foods so even if you were to say that you enjoyed uh, you know meat 30 percent more than you enjoyed a plant-based meal you know let's say uh, um, a beef stew or a chicken curry or a whatever it might be and you say oh I, i'll enjoy that 30 percent more than i would a plant-based version we're now saying that that 30 percent difference in pleasure that lasts for 15 minutes is more valuable than someone else's entire life and existence everything that they hold valuable to them gone for 15 minutes of a 30 percent difference in taste pleasure when you talk about the uh life and actually uh, this actually brings me to perhaps the um, environment ecology yeah. and um, what happens many times is if you remove a predator, if the predator species dies off, yeah. then um, the um, people, pe the ones that would, I guess you could call them victims, you could, I mean, and they are victims of like the predators of yeah, yeah, the high chain, yeah. they run rampant and actually their own goods, they actually eat themselves out of... Um, nutrients and uh, actually it ends up being bad yeah. for the entire environment yeah. so um, is it possible that um, would you perhaps uh, do you believe that there is a possibility humans have a role in the predatory chain uh, well, not in the agricultural system that we have, because we these are animals that we farm are, are, are either artificially bred by humans using you know their hands, or we facilitate the the breeding and existence and procreation of these animals. So the animals that we farm and eat are not part of a natural food chain or a natural ecosystem. And actually, um, you know, as, you, as you're probably well aware, the farming of animals has a huge ecological cost. You know, the habitat loss, the the deforestation, the land use, all of these things contribute to animal agriculture reducing um, wild biodiversity, which is of course a huge problem as well. Well. So that context, no, the context that we support, uh, definitely not, because that's not the relationship that exists. Um, actually, wildlife and the, and the natural world would flourish uh, if we eliminated this incredibly harmful aspect of, of what we do you know, for, for industries and for consumption. 
Then I have another question. Um, I guess now uh, the reason why um, people can talk about like veganism legitimately being able to supplement you is because you are capable of having artificial um, proteins and uh, supplements that um, would naturally come either from an animal or from an animal product. Since veganism is not is also about the elimination of utilizing animal products. But what about for humans who cannot afford these uh, supplements, especially the ones of the best quality? Quality. Um, okay. Should I, I hear where you're going? Just want to stop you very quickly. Just on the artificial protein thing. You know, we don't need to consume artificial proteins. We don't take protein supplements. You can take protein powders, but that's not a vegan, non-vegan thing. Lots of non-vegans have protein powders, and you get more than enough protein from whole plant food. So, protein, no. Supplements, uh, yes, you do want to have a supplement, and that supplement would maybe be like a B12 or like a you know vitamin D, which we should all have. Maybe less so in California, but generally speaking, most people should have a vitamin D supplement, vegan or non-vegan. When it comes to supplement quality, uh, there's really not much discrepancy in quality, and you can get supplements that are, are you know, less expensive than uh, a, a piece of red meat, for example. But the, the more pressing issue is what you were saying about people that can't afford it. Not that I can't afford a supplement, because the supplements, you know, in terms of value and, and expense, is, is no different to buying you know, most things. Um, but in terms of just a general affordability and accessibility. The reason I have these conversations here is because, by and large, everyone that sits down and speaks to me is in a situation where they can be vegan. There are people who don't have that luxury in certain parts of the US and, of course, in certain parts of the world. But that changes then. It's less of a moral obligation when it's not a necessity. But for you and I, because we can, that's where this conversation becomes especially pertinent because we have that choice. Do you, you, do you recognize that it is a choice for you, that you could be vegan if you wanted to be? I do recognize that, yes. That's, that's really good. And so with it being a choice then, on what grounds do uh, you think that it's acceptable to choose to inf inflict more harm onto someone else than you need to? Not, I recognize that on your grounds, um, it is unacceptable, but ultimately I have different grounds. I have a different worldview. What's, what, are, what are your grounds then? Define those. You may have already done it, but just for the point of, of this, reiterate what your grounds are. My grounds are that um, in this, as humans, we decide, we form society because we realize that we are all better off if we work together and that we can create our own goods we can our, at the agricultural revolution we are better off if we don't um, if we aren't worrying of somebody um, every night coming and just taking an evening's meal from us and our lives along with it so that is ultimately the beginnings of society and we do the freer a society the more people are able to interact I believe that we are actually better off but ultimately I believe that that humans are sovereign and that we have the greatest abilities and that if we did not we would be proven wrong and the animals would have destroyed us okay well I mean the animals don't have the capacity to do that but that doesn't make it harming them uh, acceptable now what I would say society has always changed what you've described as being like the evolution and creation of a society absolutely true but society always changes and thankfully it does because there's never been a point in human history and it certainly isn't now either where society is as good as it could be society can always improve and get better and importantly we can always learn more and we can always understand our relationship with others around us and hopefully become better citizens and create a better world as a consequence so society changes and whilst current in the current society that we live in these may be the the contracts that currently exist and this may be the situation that we're currently in that doesn't mean that in the future we shouldn't then start to think about animals deserving moral consideration because when we talk about issues of morality it's always important that we keep challenging ourselves and learning from from our past behaviors I do agree with that. yeah I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that um, and so I think we need to look beyond just these these societal constructs we need to look at something a little bit more intrinsic and I think that intrinsic is, is empathy and moral agency and whilst we could be and I'm gonna use the word pedantic I know I'm not saying that you are being pedantic but I think but I think maybe you are being a bit pedantic it's, it, we can be pedantic and create this kind of like construct that defines our morality but ultimately I think when it boils down to it when we see situations of harm and suffering that's not the rationalization that we have when we see situations of harm and suffering we empathize with those enduring that harm and suffering and that's why I think we can understand that it's wrong because we can understand what they're going through. So I think empathy is the cornerstone to creating a better society. Now, we can empathize with animals. When we can empathize with their suffering, we can acknowledge what they're enduring. And because we can empathize with them and because we know what they're going through, we know what it's that experience, you know, it comes negatively to them. I think from a moral perspective, that's how society is, becomes better. 
you know, your life might not be made significantly better from an environmental perspective. Sure, animal agriculture has it, you know, is it hugely environmentally damaging. So removing that is better for the environment and better for humans in that context. But even as an individual, although you may not feel a benefit within your own life for, you know, the destabilization of, you know, animal exploitation, the betterment of society comes from reducing suffering. And when we acknowledge that, I think suffering breeds suffering uh, and violence can breed violence. You know, slaughterhouse workers uh, have mental health problems. They can become increasingly violent because of the work that they do. You know, society is negatively impacted by what we do to animals. And I don't think that we'll ever have a world which I think we probably both want, which is just a nicer world, right? I don't think we will ever have that while we have facilities and places where we knowingly put billions, trillions of sentient animals through a process that we know consciously causes them pain and ultimately takes their life. Um, and I think that's morality for me is about empathy and extending that empathy in, in ways that, that make practical sense, you know, which to animals it does. I may be allowed to give closing remarks. Um, so I very much respect and I admire um, your uh, arguments. I think that they are very well put together and I do not um, disagree with them um, on your grounds. What I do say is that I think that we have a long way to go in terms of human relations and uh, human societies and I think that um, maybe this may sound like a kick the can down the road argument, but I believe that we would be better served focusing on our own species and even within that, like the subunits of our own species, like our own societies and then eventually our own species before we start considering others. But I do believe that we can have um, this conversa these conversations um, on a broader scale, policy scale, um, a couple of centuries down the line. A couple of centuries. <laughs> I certainly hope that that's not the case. Okay, just for the sake of argument, could it not be that for you, when you buy food, you just buy plant-based food and then put all of your energy into focusing on these other issues and focusing on creating better societies and better relationships for interper you know, interpersonal relationships between humans. Could you not just eat vegan three times a day when you eat and then focus all of your other energy on these interpersonal relationships that you clearly care about and are of course very important. But is that not just a small thing that you could do that just negates that aspect, but then doesn't take away from you being able to do everything else that you care about? I could, but, and I know this will sound cool to you, but ultimately I don't want to, and I feel that there is no obligation. But I feel that we could, as a society, agree that there is a moral obligation once we have our house mostly in order. All right. We're going to have to wrap it up there. Um, thank you so much for a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Jed, I love that name, by the yes. way. It reminds me of something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, really, yeah, it's really good. Um, but whilst I, I just, and I, I really, yeah, I've got to go, but I just want to say, whilst I understand that you don't want to, wants are not good justifications when it comes to the exploitation of others. You know, many people want to do something, but that want shouldn't get in the fact that if there is a harm, if there is a victim who's been harmed as a consequence of that want, the want in and of itself shouldn't make it morally permissible. Okay, maybe we'll leave. Thanks, Jed. Right. Have a great day. Thank you. I really appreciate you it. Have a great life as well, too. by the way. Yes. We'll probably never you see too. each other again. All right, All right bye, Jed. Bye.